Welcome to my YouTube channel. My guest on Facing the Canon is Leah Sachs, a professional musician. Leah Thomas, welcome to Facing the Canon. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You're also called Leah Sax. Yes. So how comes you've got two names? Well, I play the saxophone for a living and decided, given that my social media is how I connect with people, that I should make it short and snappy. So with my name and my instrument, so Leah Sax, uh, which work very well, people now send mail to me with that name and don't know my actual name. And then I started a podcast and then I was like, I can't be Leah Thomas because nobody knows who that is. And so retained Leah Sax through then and now... I am both people. <laughs> I know, absolutely. No, I understand the whole concept of the yes. name because I've got a Greek name, but yes. I use J. John. Yeah. And now, when did you first yeah. begin to play the saxophone? I first began playing saxophone when I was 11. I'd started piano when I was about four or five. And my father, who was a very wise man, said to myself, my sister, it is time for you ladies to learn a second instrument. Um, and I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> being the actually surprisingly quite quiet uh, 10 year old um, and he suggested the sax because um, he knew me pretty well and I took to it like a duck to water and never looked back straight away yeah all of a sudden because I could express myself in a sa um, on the saxophone in a way that I couldn't on the piano um, and because I'd already had that training on the piano it, it came relatively easy comparatively and just had a great time playing the saxophone and one of my earliest memories is school concerts playing like the Pink Panther that's amazing we, your parents Musical? Um, musical, uh, yes. My dad has a great sense of rhythm and can sing beautifully. Um, my mother, uh, great piano player, uh, guitar player. I never took it professionally, but yeah, a, a little musical family. My sister's musical as well. And when did you know that you wanted to be a professional musician? About um, a month, about three months into my master's degree. Oh, so several years later. Well, I was always very thankful in that I, um, I, for studying wise, I liked school, I liked learning things, so always went with subjects that I found really engaging, of which music was one of them. And then was doing an internship in between my undergraduate and masters for a music agency and got really sad because I was enabling other people to do the music, not me. And I was like, oh no, this is connected to my emotions. I need to do the to do to make music for a living. Um, and then started the masters and was like, yeah, this is definitely the thing for me, even though it was an academic masters. And my family were like, well, we knew that that's what you were going to do. And I was like, well, why didn't why didn't you tell me that I was going to do? Yeah, so that, yeah, that fairly late on. That your passion was always yeah. music. I was always, always also really interested in communication and radio and things like that as well. Um, I had a family that was also quite into that, so that was where I thought I was going to go. And then the music, the passion just came, and I've always loved it. And then it became my career. And I can't quite believe it's my career, and I love it. <laughs> now, you play a number of instruments. Yes. What, what else do you play? So I play the piano, uh, and the flute, and the clarinet, and the saxophone. And you, you can't forget the key British instrument of the recorder as well. As well. And in a church context, I also sing as well. And do backing well. vocals and gigs. Yeah. Well, you mentioned church. Yes. So were you brought up as a Christian? Yes, I have a, a parents, sister family who love the Lord. And I remember when I was about seven, my mother saying to me, we're sat on the bed. She's like, Leah, do you want to make Jesus the boss of your life? And I remember going, yes, yes, I do. And she's like, okay, you've got to say a little prayer. Um, and I, I know that's significant because I don't remember things very well. But if it's a key thing, the Lord's at work, the Holy Spirit's prompting your heart. I do remember that happening. So, yeah, they grew up in, in a church family. Um, Jesus-loving family and kind of just steadily dripping, being taught, being loved, being rebuked. Yeah, here I am today, all those yeah. many moons later. But you remember that moment oh, sitting I do. on the bed. I remember, and I remember turning away when I, like she was sat on the side of the bed, and the wall was there, and turning around and just saying, you know, will you be the boss of my life? And I, I heard one, somebody said once that, um, so obviously one characteristic of God that frequently brings people to the, to, to the Lord. And for me, I just think I need to go, there's someone sovereign over me and who loves me and knows me. So yeah, and he's kept me faithful. So he's kept you since that day. Oh, he You're, has totally. You've been aware of his presence. Yes, and there are times when I haven't been aware of his presence. And there are times when 
I felt it really difficult. And there are times when he's shown me such great love through church family or through actual family. And I've been overwhelmed by it. And there are moments of joy and there are moments of doubt as I think any believer has that path. Oh, but you know, I'm very thankful to where he's brought me to today. In this instance, right here. But you know, a church family that keeps me going in a career that is very worldly um, and loves me deeply. Um, and turns me to Jesus, so I'm very thankful. Absolutely. Yeah. So you go and do music. Yes. You, you ended up doing a master's. Historical musicology. Right. What? <laughs> what is that? I'm very good at spelling in essays about music. Um, I can tell you about, like, you know, the history of the piano fantasy, history, culture, society, arts, sociology, music. What drew you to that? I really liked knowing things. Yes. Um, and I love how the arts integrate. So I love how art and architecture and literature and music and culture and politics all come together and how they're totally interlinked. So I hear a piece of music and can understand the politics or the fashion. And for me, it, so it helps you express it and understand what you're playing. Absolutely. Yeah. And the Bible is filled. Yes. The Old Testament with so much music. I know. <laughs> and musical instruments. I love it when Miriam gets her tambourine out. I'm like, you sing to the Lord. Um, it is, and it's so filled with music. And I found that very convicting and helpful as well, because for a while I wondered if music was a valid career choice. Because, you know, I go around expressing sounds. You know, that's not a, it's not a, you haven't got anything tangible at the end of the day. You're not speaking the truth to someone. Um, but just seeing that picture of music and its part and its value in the Bible, how it is used in a church context, how God uses music to embed truth into our hearts through song. I mean, the Psalms, I love that God created a book full of music because yeah. he understands how it's Absolutely. different and how that has you know, a way of embedding truth into our hearts. So and music different. to calm us, to calm that's us, in the Psalms. To calm us, to cry out to when we're feeling anguished, when we're feeling lost. It brings me peace knowing that we can do that. And also, you know, when I'm serving on music in church, that's very different to when I play the saxophone on stage. But it's such a privilege to serve God and love my family with that, church family with that. Um, because we're singing truth to each other and to God, and it's not about me at all. No, absolutely. Yeah. You do your MA in? M must, yes. In, in historical musicology. What do you do then? Uh, then I start teaching a little. I go for jobs in music career industries. Um, uh, was that initially like a tent making job until you knew what was the job? Well, it was those first few months out of university, um, figuring out where I was going. And I, end, I was kind of like, oh, I won't teach because I want to do this. And then I um, found that in teaching, it's very relational and you just get to love people in it. Um, and and then my career was picking up slowly, 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 because it's about networking and who you know and the right place or in the right time or from a biblical perspective, the right perspective, when God opens the door for you. Absolutely. Because I, I know in hindsight, you know, doors have been opened in the last five or six, seven years that clearly I wasn't ready for 10 years ago. And the Lord said, okay, you are now equipped, spiritually ready to go through those doors. That is so true, yeah. Leah. I, I, I think many times we're frustrated yes. because a door hasn't opened. Yes. And I do wonder whether God is actually saying, well, you've not finished your apprenticeship. Yep, yep. You're not... Or character building. Character building. And I think, I, I genuinely think, like, spirit, for my work, like, going into, like, events, clubs, you know, musicians, venues all around the world, like, spiritually equipped to be in that space and to hold fast, um, I think that was a... a, 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 a um, I think that was a definite timing of, or was God's goodness. So I wouldn't have been ready before. But yeah, I was teaching along that way. So you were teaching? Yes. And I still do that. And almost teach, and you still teach? Yes. So in schools? I teach one afternoon in school and I have a, a lovely group of private students. Yes. And I'm thankful for that because it is so relational. Yes. You just get to love these, mostly young people. I have adults as well. And God's so kind because I've seen these kids as like six-year-olds and then they're like, 18 year olds who tower above me and that's really relational when you get to love them and along the way learn the clarinet or the saxophone I've got students now who have finished university and I go out for a coffee with them like once a term when they're back because I know them so well because you know for young people to spend half an hour an hour weekly with an adult who's not a family member is quite an unusual phenomenon.
So, uh, Leah, what would you say yeah. to everyone tuned in now, yes. right, whose parents have made them l learn musical instruments yes. and they're frustrated? Frustrated in what way? Uh, trying to rehearse <laughs> and practice. Okay, there is a very narrow species of human who enjoys practicing. Um, I am not a person who enjoys practicing, but it is an objectively good thing. Little and often, keep going. You have no idea how many adults go to me, oh, I'd wish I'd kept going, like all the time, all the time. Persevere, keep going. Also, find music that you like and that you can express yourself through, because it doesn't have to be what your teacher likes. That's my, that's very, my wisdom. <laughs> very good advice. Okay, so um, you did the degree, yep. you're teaching. Yep. How were you guided into becoming a professional musician? I'm going to use the highly technical phrase as I kind of bumbled along. Uh, and God opened the doors. Um, I'm not someone by nature who is a five-year goal planner. I know people like that exist. It's just not the way that I process life. Um, so started, you know, contacts I made at university, uh, would say, are you free for a gig? Um, I would, running my own musical projects as well, kind of doing that. But then those networks grew and I got on with people quite well because it's a very social job because people think being a musician is really glamorous whereas in reality you spend hours in the rain driving somewhere you wait six hours during a sound check and then you play for two hours and you go home and it's 3 a.m so it's, there's, you've got to be able to get on with people so I got on with people and people kept calling me back um, and I met more people and they took me with their projects and their bands and I've ended up in you know various bizarre places and venues and met wonderful people. So I think God has just opened the doors for me. Um, and even though it was something that I wanted and prayed for, it was never a, like, I did this and this happened. It was just generally growing and, you know, speaking to people in love. Because I'm very open about the fact that I love Jesus. Um, and that's quite countercultural in the arts. Well, society, but I think perhaps it's... I, I see it naturally evident in the arts. Um, and so that is how the Lord has guided me and how I just kind of happen to end up here. I don't think it was any more intentional on no, my part. Absolutely. <laughs> no, but I like it where it says in the Bible, Leah, when God opens a door, yes. no one can shut it. Yes. And when God shuts the door, yeah. no one can open. Yeah. And I, I think what is so good about that, and we really need to take hold of it is that look if the door is shut yeah don't try and pound it down yeah yeah, yeah exactly and it's so hard to emotionally let go of that yes because objectively you know that to be a truth and we'll keep probably praying over something and the and the you know because that's what our hearts want um but god can open bigger doors than our brain thinks exist um you know we we want one thing and god has a better and good plan for us Absolutely. And there's no way I could have engineered the place no. that I've ended up if no. I tried. But God has opened up those doors. And I've met some great people. So you play several different instruments, yes. but you're focusing on the saxophone. Yeah, sax is my thing, indeed. Is your, it's right. Thing. So where has that taken you over these last few years? What kind of things do you do? What kind of places do you go to? Um, everywhere and everything. So. Um, I do a local garden party with backing tracks, or I'll do an artist stage where they want me part of a, a horn section. So horn sections like trumpet, brass, sax, um, trombone, saxophone. Or I'll do a high-end function gig. I was in Tel Aviv just before lockdown. Or I'll do, uh, you know, a wedding in Hull. So it's everywhere and anywhere. I do a lot of full band stuff. I do a lot of a product which is um, very now uh, called DJ Live, which somebody's DJing, um, and I'll be just improvising over the top of that, just having basically a great party. Um, you know, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, um, corporate events ac across the country, across the world. So all sorts. Oh, so in any one particular week or one particular month. Yeah. The variety. Oh, huge! And frequently, I don't know what I'm turning up to. So I, I, I'm kind of booked for like, okay, do that. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, uh, awards dinner or if it's going to be a, you know, christening or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I know it, I mean, it's really obvious, like you're booked for Ascot Racecourse. I'm like, okay, I must be at the races. <laughs> or you're booked, you know, for like Chelsea Plowshare. Okay, it's going to be, so yeah, it takes me, I could be completely different. And I'm thankful I'm not a great person with routine. So it's lovely that yeah, I can you be. you like. Oh, I love it. And you, again, you get to meet so many different people. Um, 
which is always an opportunity, not always an opportunity taken, but always an opportunity. And that's why I feel so called to be in this industry is because even though I play the saxophone, I get to love all these people. Um, and yeah. you said earlier on, yeah. you're very, and I commend you that you're very good at te letting people know that you're a follower of Jesus. How do people respond in those situations? Before I answer your question, um, uh, God has just made me a very vocal per person and at ease with myself. So that's God at work, just being like, yeah, I'm a Christian, and um, it's all on my social media. Um, he, oh God is so kind, because I do not hide it in any way, shape or form. Um, so do you try and get it out there as oh, soon as you can? Yes, but there's also, there's a truth of like, my life, you know, my, my, some of my closest friends are my church family. You know, the biggest events in my year, you know, if I'm going to go and serve on a Cypher Venture camp, you know, that's, everyone knows that I do the, the kids' holiday Bible camp every summer. You know, so there's a natural thing of, oh, when I was at church on Sunday, oh, yeah, I was thinking, you know, I was, you know, when I was at Bible college when I was 18. Yes. I forgot about it. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's a naturalness about it. Yeah, and you find a way of weaving because in. Because it's who I am. It's kind of normal. aspect of your story. Yeah. You know, well, when I was 18, I went to Bible college in America. But that's it immediately, oh, you went to Bible college when you were 18 in America. And I'm like, yes, I did. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and then it's like, oh, so how Christian are you? I'm like, everything you think, I'm probably that. And then... It goes from there. And it goes from there. And, 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 but I wonder also if I'm... I don't have regular co-workers. So, like, I'm not an office person. So I wonder because I'm meeting these people for bursts and I will repeat meet them but they're not like the same people every day so I yes. wonder if I'm you know God's been very kind in that I have that conversation they yeah. know it you're a seed sower yeah well that's a lovely way of thinking about it isn't which is it? also a truth <laughs> it's true it, though isn't it it is I've never heard it I haven't no. uh, had it articulated no, to but me but it's a bit like Jesus way. meeting the woman at the well yes and and he talks to her yeah. about water yeah. because she wants water yeah, exactly and that's exactly it. and the story goes on and you know on my personal so my my work social media is my sh my shop front because i'm completely self-employed so i have to you know here's me playing the saxophone here's me something but like for example i have a podcast i share all which is a, a podcast for christians i share all that content on that same platform i cross share yes so there's no hiding that this is a literally saying this is what i believe the first episode i gave my testimony and it wasn't until after i shared it that i suddenly realized that oh i've just shared my testimony with all my work context yes um and was very thankful God enabled me to do that through a share button. <laughs> but I also, I think when they then hear you play, yeah, I think that probably makes an impact because you're good at what you do. I pray so, yeah. And, well, I've heard you. You are. <laughs> you're good at what you do. And I think sometimes um, if we're kind of very mediocre mm. in the work that we're doing, yeah. that's quite noticeable oh, yes. and has an effect on our testimony. Oh, completely. But if you're actually excellent at what you do, yeah. that also supports what you're trying to say. I really pray it does. And, um, you know, being on time, being prepared, which is not frequently a musician trait, I, I do try and do that in good conscience. And I also try and, you know, the way that I interact with musicians and agencies, promoters, fixers, as we as we call them, try to be consistent and always honest. Um, and I try and be above reproach. I'm sure I fail and have failed many times. Um, but it is different because I, I, it is common just to say, oh, I can't do this. But I'm like, no, this is why I can't do this or this has changed. Yeah. Have there been situations in your work industry mm. uh, where you felt a bit vulnerable and possibly, oh goodness, I'm in a very dark place here. Yeah, I felt the dark place. I haven't, and have felt that I needed to be there. I felt that I needed to be the truth and hope in that dark place. And whether it is the fact that there are <laughs> drugs being around all the time or whether I remember once performing in an event and it was also a burlesque club, which I didn't quite realise. So my band was playing in between the acts and realised like I was the only clothed woman on stage the entire time. Or whether, you know, um, there is a, a darkness when people are struggling with things, um, or whether there's a language or conversation which is just this, uh, not a good way to live. 
But I, that's also why I feel so called to be in that space with those people, um, is to love them and go, okay, you're going through this, or you're seeing this, or you're living like this, how can I love you? Yes. So what do you do, Leah, about inappropriate lyrics to a music song uh, that as a Christian we wouldn't sing? What do you do? Um, sometimes I sing them. Yes. Um, so different, I, I, was, I, met a, I was on a gig on two nights ago, um, was talking with a brother there who's also a musician. It's just really interesting because every believer slash every creative will have a different conscience line. Yes. And therefore, I don't think there is a right and wrong uh, in that sense. So my conscience is, um, uh, if there are certain lyrics I can get away with going, ooh, ooh, ah, as a backing vocalist, I will as in like, or, or just hum or just stand back from. I'm not um, a... When I do vocals on gigs, it's a backing vocal. It would never be a lead vocal. So I'm never actually in a 100% position to do it. Um, are there certain things I wouldn't sing if I was asked to? Yes. Has that situation come up yet? No. Yeah. Um, one of the benefits of being an instrumentalist. However, if you're looking at a bigger context, I'm definitely playing songs or along to songs where the language is not edifying or the message of the song is not fact of the, the truth. In reality... Do I think people are actually listening to the songs that they're singing? Not really. Are they having a good dance? Yes. Would I rather be in that situation than not 100%? Yeah. Because how can I l love people? And when I say love people, because I know I've said it a lot, it's like, love them because of Jesus and because I was loved first. So how can I be in that situation if I'm not there? So... And be a channel of his grace. And be a channel of grace. And, and, be, and bring light. And bring light and non-judgment. Uh, yeah, I understand. Um, in that. And I was pondering this again last night. Like, every now and again, I'm, I'm dressed by bands, and that can be interesting. Also, because I'm like five for eight, and most musicians are much smaller. Um, you know, trying to be appropriate with that. I'm sure I get it wrong. Um, trying to honour the job that you're being hired to do, but not you know, overplaying it um, in the sense of not, not, not just conforming. You just kind of take each challenge as it comes. And I sure. try and pre-process as much of it as I can beforehand. Um, sometimes in a situation, you just have to get on with it. And then afterwards, you go, oh, I should have done this. I should have prayed through this in this way. I think that's true for <laughs> many of us, Leah. But you also, you're a member of a church yes, in London. Yes, I am. Christ Church Christ Mayfair. Christ Church Mayfair, yes. And your part, you help lead worship occasionally. Yes. We are, we've got a wonderful, yeah, Christchurch Mayfair. I've been there for 13, nearly 14 years. I'm an old hat now. because yeah, we're So you love leading worship? Oh, I love serving with my brothers and sisters on the music team to enable them to sing praises to the Lord and sing truth to each other. That is completely different to all my performance work. Um, we are blessed with um, a number of bands we rotate. I realise that is a, a, lo a lot of musicians. We've, we've got a big music ministry thing going. At, um, and so we are big on training and equipping our musicians like musically and theologically and, you know, how those intertwine. But, you know, I'm, I'm leading music this Sunday. And in a certain way, it's... I use this phrase and then a brother was like, well, it's not... It's much more important um, for my heart when I'm, when I'm leading music there. Not more important than my day job, because in my day job, I'm still living for Jesus. I'm still loving people. Um, but yeah, I lead music. Um, I lead in church. I tend to lead from um, keys and vocals. Um, and oh, it's such a joy to do that. And to be super generalising, the big difference for leading music at church is that when I'm on stage, it's all about me. Uh, in the secular context, like how can I be as entertaining and do a good as job and be in the energy and the party as much as I can, literally jumping up and down, you know, um, being the life and soul. And then at church, it's like, how can I play music in such a way that is glorifying to God's word, that doesn't distract my, con you know, my church family from the words and truth that they're singing and also worship God at the same time as that. So it's completely different. Um, it's not about me at all. Um, and sometimes when I've done like four gigs in a row and then it's Sunday, it can feel like the fifth gig. And <laughs> you're like, no. So I have to get, like pray, debrief my head and go, Leah, this is not who you were last night. 
It is, you are still saved, you are still a child of God, but you are doing a different role. Leah, we can't have you on Phasing the Canon, a professional <laughs> saxophonist, and not have you play <laughs> us some music. So I would love it if you could play us, I was going to say secular music, but a, a piece of music from your world. Yeah, work, work life. And then move from that and play us a piece of sacred music. I'd love to, I'd love to. <laughs> I'm, I know I'm going to love this and I hope you're going to enjoy Leah Sachs as she plays two pieces of music for us. Leah, I love that. I, I've never heard Amazing Grace played on the saxophone. <laughs> Thank you, Leah, for joining us on Facing the Canon. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's inspired you. I feel inspired. I feel like I've been tuning into the melody of heaven. Thank you for joining us on Facing the Canon. Please join us again. <laughs>